Well, good morning, good Monday morning. We are on this adventure for six weeks looking at the prophetic ministry, and particularly about as people, how we just develop our character and our focus to actually become those that really steward this ministry well. Yesterday, I spoke from Peter and I spoke about make every effort to make your calling secure so that you don't stumble. And we looked at just the challenges of accepting a prophetic nature. So today I want to look at some of the character issues and character challenges and just the personal responses as we begin to develop a prophetic ministry. So first of all, I just want to say, don't overlook the message because of the person. I want to say that to you. You know, when I first started and realised that I was being called into a prophetic ministry, I looked at myself and I just thought, how can I ever have a ministry? I lose my temper at home. I'm not the most disciplined. I don't do this right. I do that wrong. And all the time, I just used to say, because I was wrong, it was impossible. But again and again, God would say, no, I've called you. Remember, the calling, the prophetic calling is so strong. No, Rachel, I've called you. And I'm going to deal with your character. And partly because the prophetic ministry is someone that's called to be that plumb line and set things straight. I think we're often hard on ourselves and other people are often quite critical of us. And so I think it's a really important lesson for us that when you receive a prophetic word from people or when you're asked to give the prophetic word, don't be judgmental of them or over judgmental of yourself. So often we just judge the word according to the influence or reputation of a person. And of course, there's wisdom in assessing people and, you know, discerning people's lives. I'm not saying that we don't do that at all. But it's when the enemy drives us into this over anxious self-beating. All through the Bible, we find that God chooses people who naturally we wouldn't choose and certainly who are not perfect perfect um you know situations where people comes if you discern someone's prophetic ministry just about how they're dressed or how they present themselves how educated they are how they look you know often we can use wrong criteria so don't overlook the message just because of the packaging it comes in remember i finished yesterday and saying you know the amateur packaging and it might look very plain and this message is delivered and you think, well, why did it come like that? Remember Naaman, you know, he nearly refused the message that would have brought him healing because he didn't want to go to that dirty river. What about Jesus? We could have refused Jesus, prophet, priest and king, because he was a baby born in a manger. But he was to be the king of kings. You know, he was brought up in Nazareth. That was not the celeb city. And his family were carpenters. He should have been, if he was going to be an outstanding teacher, he should have been the top rabbi's son, brought up in the salubrious house, but he wasn't. You see, none of these attributes marked him out and none of them actually qualified him to be the distinctive, amazing leader he was. So don't overlook the message and don't overlook yourself because of the surroundings. Moses was not a good communicator, but he was chosen. Jeremiah was too young, but he was given such influence in his nation. Gideon did come from the tribe that was nothing, the, the weakest of the weak. David was the youngest son and only a shepherd boy. None of these people came from amazing backgrounds, but God chose them. So don't disqualify yourself or others because of our background. Again and again, actually, if you look at prophetic ministry or prophetic people, they do come from unusual backgrounds or have been through unusual um, experiences, difficulties. And part of those things fashion and shape them. Remember John the Baptist, he was out in the wilderness, wore camel hair and locusts and honey, etc. So I just want to say to you, be careful how you assess and evaluate prophetic ministry 
And just because you don't understand the background, it doesn't mean that they're wrong. But do look for their character. Look for kindness. Look for encouragement. And do take note of their reputation because by your fruit, you will know them. But don't just overlook people because they don't quite fit in. I believe in these days, God is going to use the unusual. Do you remember in the prophetic thing, it says God's going to use the unusual and make it usual. And I believe part of that unusual to be made usual is people will come from unusual places and do unusual things. I remember when the Toronto blessing first started and people falling out and laughing and things. That was totally unusual and I didn't like it. I felt it was weird. I felt it a bit intimidating. But when I watch the fruit of people just being overwhelmed with a very real sense of the love of God, I began to realise that God was building something new. And so you see, this prophetic ministry is given to us to restore foundations. The prophetic ministry is needed in foundational times. And this is a building season. It is people who come and help churches and individuals with guidance, instruction, exhortation, revelation, and help in making critical judgments. This prophetic person will stir the heart of the bride, will awaken new um, levels of worship and prayer. Often the prophetic people will begin to write the songs and anthems. Remember last March, you know, the Lord bless you and keep you and may his favour rest upon you. What a prophetic song that was to the body of Christ. To say, it's all right. Don't panic. I'm with you. I can bless you. The prophetic ministry is needed in these days because they can see the way and they know what to do. And what we need to learn as prophetic people is how then to instruct with the clear understanding to show people the end game. We might know where we've got to get to, but I believe also in this time, we need to spend time and praying and get discernment and wisdom so that we can teach people how to get there. As prophetic people, we need to mature in our understanding and we need more than just words about the future and the vision to come. But I believe that we need radical downloads of instructional, instructional revelation so that we can begin to show people how to get there. God is releasing a forerunner anointing upon us and we might not feel adequate and we might not feel we understand, but come on prophetic people, let us make every effort to take hold of our calling. I do believe that we, God is calling people. We won't be perfect, but we will be God's mouthpiece in this forerunner season. So Father, I want to pray for every forerunner. I pray you'll open our mouths and even where the message seems to come through broken and fragile vessels, I thank you, you're going to help us. You see, God's going to take our character and our strengths and even our weaknesses and raise up a prophetic people because the gift of the prophetic ministry at this time is that x-ray vision. You know, John chapter 2, verse 23 to 25. And this is Jesus. John chapter 2. And while Jesus was in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, many people saw the signs and wonders that Jesus was performing and believed in his name. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. He did not need any testimony about mankind, for he knew already what was in the heart of each man. You see, the prophetic ministry and prophetic people have this strange ability to make a discernment and understanding of the inner workings and motivation of people. And suddenly, you know how they're wired. And I believe in this building season, God is going to really upgrade the prophetic ministry so that we can discern. Remember I said one of the things, discern, so that we can just read people and think, this is the one I need to build in. This is the one I, I won't. The, a prophetic person 
has an increased ability by the gifting of God to know the intents and the workings of man's motivations and to understand their heart issues. But listen to me, you only know what God chooses to reveal to you at the time. That's why sometimes prophets or prophetic people can be perceived as intimidating. In worst case scenarios, people even withdraw and keep a little bit of distance distance because they've got this idea oh no she can see right into me she knows everything about me in some senses that's a compliment because that respect shows that they understand you do have an ability to hear God but we need to just demystify that and let people know look seriously I cannot see right through you but I know I do carry an anointing to help you see yourself correctly and I do carry an anointing which can help you correct character and make better choices for your life in the future. In a Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says for the word of God is living and active it's sharper than any double-edged sword it penetrates to the dividing of soul and spirit joint and marrow and this word the rhema word of God it judges thoughts and the attitudes of heart. So as we develop in our prophetic ministry. God does give us an ability to understand the underlying motives, to expose hypocrisy. I do believe that God does give us that x-ray vision, that we can see into the depths of things that are hidden and bring exposure. And unfortunately, uncovering things is not only comfortable, but it is necessary. But if we handle that revelation in the right way, we don't need to make enemies. Revelation of God is never given to us to expose, humiliate or to bring people down. This gift of revelation is always bought as a loving tool to help people get an opportunity to live their life well. God never comes to oppress his people but he comes to release them so that they can live in freedom. So precious prophetic people, I do believe that in these days, God is going to raise up new prophetic voices, but don't overlook that message they carry just because it isn't packaged in the way you expect. Don't overlook it in yourself. God is making message carriers. And we are going to be asked to help be a voice of wisdom in this time of restoring the foundations. And God is going to increase our x-ray vision so that we can have wisdom to know who are the tools, how are we gonna build, what is God gifting to us? There is going to be exposure. That is one of the things of a prophetic gift. We do discern and expose, but never to humiliate, only to release. And I believe it is an upgrade season. And God's looking for people. Come on, are you ready to be my x-ray eyes and to see what I want to build? Let me pray for you. So Father, I thank you for the unusual messengers you're bringing at this time. You said unusual things are going to happen. And Father, I pray that we will receive people who come in these days. I pray even in ourselves where we have just tried to almost silence some of the call, some of the quirkiness, some of the revelation, because it's made us afraid. Stir it up in your church, in the graciousness of all your love, because your love never fails. And we thank you for this on Monday morning. And everyone said, Amen.